Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox and I'd like to welcome you to episode 242 of the FCPA Compliance Network. The FCPA Compliance Network Report is sponsored by Advanced Compliance Solutions, your one-stop shop for all things FCPA Compliance. Today I do something a little bit different because I start off in an audio podcast and I go to a video and I put this video in for several reasons. First of all, it's Scott Prochazka. Scott is the president and CEO of Centerpoint Energy Houston. And Scott put together a video for his employees after the BW emissions testing scandal. This is one of the most powerful tools I have ever seen a corporate a senior manager, CEO, or president using to communicate the value his company holds. In this, he talks about the BW scandal and how such an event might impact a company as uh, different as Centerpoint Energy, which is a utility concern for music. It's a great example of how CEO can set the tone for uh, top management and can trickle down to employees in the middle and down to the bottom of the budget and uh, sit out to all Centerpoint employees. The video itself is very short, only three and a half minutes. Uh, I'm reliably, reliably informed by the person who put it together. The cost was minimal around, uh, or certainly under $500. And now the audio clip from the CEO of Centerpoint Energy. But I want to address one in particular, the shocking discovery of what happened at Volkswagen, and discuss what we can learn from it. For over 75 years, Volkswagen has been an automotive powerhouse. It is the biggest company in Germany, and its cars are part of pop culture. Even its Super Bowl commercials are famous. Last year's depicted the company's engineers as angels, designing cars and overseeing assembly lines, all while sprouting wings. Those angels have fallen. According to widespread news reports, Volkswagen admitted that it rigged software in diesel vehicles to cheat on emissions tests for nearly a decade in 11 million vehicles worldwide. So while it was all good during testing, once those vehicles actually hit the road, they spewed out emissions far beyond legal limits. At first, Volkswagen denied any wrongdoing, but ultimately was forced to admit it had deliberately defrauded regulators and customers. How could this happen? It appears that Volkswagen was blinded by its ambition so desperate to overtake Toyota as the world's number one automaker that it decided to cheat. It was hostile to regulation, so it sought to work around the law and keep quiet about it. Volkswagen's culture, from the board down, was deaf to outside voices. So how did all that work out? The CEO was dismissed. The company's stock price dropped by a third in just a week, wiping out $25 billion in shareholder value. And of course, the lawsuits. Dozens of class action lawsuits have already been filed. And that's just a start. Still to come? Criminal investigations. Billions of dollars in legal fees and billions more in settlements and judgments. EPA fines alone could reach $18 billion. By the way, Volkswagen also has to fix, recall, or do something else about those 11 million cars. Not to mention rebuild trust with its customers, investors, and regulators. The situation at Volkswagen spiraled out of control beyond anyone's imagination, doing long-term damage to the company's reputation and bottom line. This is an example of why our core values are so important, particularly integrity. We do what's right for our customers, our communities, our shareholders, and each other. We follow our rules and policies and the law. I'd like to use this incident as an opportunity to encourage conversation. Topics for discussion include, what does integrity mean to you? What would the people at Volkswagen have done differently if they thought about how the news headlines were going to look? Could a similar incident happen at Centerpoint Energy? What pressure am I under, or putting others under, that could lead to bad decisions? What happened at Volkswagen is nothing short of a catastrophe, but let's learn from their mistakes. The last thing any of us want is to find ourselves in remotely similar circumstances. 
Thank you for your time, and thank you for continuing to live our values. I think you can see this is a very powerful video, and I hope you will understand that this is the type of communication that would not take long for senior management to put together, yet could be very helpful for your compliance program going forward. I had a CEO once tell me that he viewed his role as the ambassador of compliance for his company. And everywhere he went, he would say a few words about compliance. He wasn't a subject matter expert, but he basically said, we're not going to bribe and we're not going to pay people uh, to do business with us. And we're not going to hire third parties who will uh, do that on our behalf. And that turned out to be quite a way to communicate the message of compliance down to the troops of the company. When I interviewed employees across the co company some years later, they all spoke about how the president had always gone out of his way to be uh, an ambassador and to talk about compliance. But this message uh, from the CEO of Centerpoint Energy, I think, gives you another technique that you can utilize to help communicate that message of compliance. And what you're really trying to do here is literally burn compliance, doing business in compliance, not bribing, not uh, engaging in bribery and corruption into the very fabric of your organization. The VW emissions testing scandal is not an anti-corruption scandal, yet the lessons for the compliance practitioner and indeed an entire organization are extraordinarily powerful. Think about the reputational damage which has been done to Volkswagen and continues to be up until today. Uh, the stock uh, price went down by one-third, but that's probably going to pale beside the costs uh, both direct cost and indirect cost and consequential cost that B VW is going to be paying for years. Think about, obviously, the cars and the value of the cars. Now think about the dealers, those independent dealers. And VW finances every one of those uh, uh, cars that go to a dealership before people like you and me even move towards financing to purchase them or to lease them. So the reputational damage... Uh, in addition to the fines and penalties that they may have under the uh, Clean Air Act here in the United States or in any other uh, regulatory regime across the world, could be quite uh, dramatic and quite consequential and even catastrophic. But here the CEO of Centerpoint uses all of this backdrop to put together a message of compliance for his company. And I can't emphasize enough the power of this message uh, obviously, the video and the graphics are uh, very interesting, certainly will keep your attention. And once again, it's just, just over three minutes. So it could be something that uh, could be very powerful for you. It could be very useful to your organization. And uh, you may not be able to, uh, you may not have access to your CEO uh, several times uh, a year to do something like this. But when this type of scandal erupts, uh, if the Walmart uh, scandal, obviously in 2012, we had GSK, GlaxoSmithKline in China in 2013. Uh, in 2014, we had uh, Petrobras. And in 2015, we had both FIFA and uh, the Volkswagen emissions uh, testing scandal. So uh, unfortunately, we're getting lots of scandals uh, that you can have your CEO talk about. So kudos to Centerpoint Energy, the chief compliance officer and compliance team for putting this together. And I would commend this to you for your consideration going forward as well. This is Tom Fox. Uh, this has been a little bit shorter edition of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report, but I hope you found it useful. And I look forward to visiting with you again. Thank you for listening. <music>